Hey guys, Nephi Zufelt here with Wealth Mentality Families, and this video is intended to help you play your new board game, uh, Startup Millionaire, the game of creating wealth. The game, as you know, is for two to five players. It's for those who are 12 and up, and we, we say 12 and up just because there's some pretty complex, not complex, but there's a lot of math, there's a lot of addition and multiplication that has to be done. If you have a kid that's younger than 12 that can do multiplication, or if they have a calculator and they want to play, uh, then that's awesome. But it's 12 just because of the math. Uh, it also it takes about one to two hours to play, so there's a, a short version of the game and a longer version of the game. They have the exact same rules other than how, how much money you, you're trying to play to. Um, and so if you're playing the shorter version, it's usually somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour. And if you're playing the extended version, it's somewhere between an hour and two hours. So uh, that's how you go. Uh, but here's the box. As you open it up, you're going to find several things inside. So first of all, we have... Uh, the rule book, so make sure you check that out. At, also, at the back of the rule book, you may not notice this, but there is a um, an education guide, which is really awesome. So as you go through this game, there are going to be opportunities to teach and to learn about biz starting businesses, um, about entrepreneurship. And so there's just some suggestions in here that if you see certain things throughout the game, might be a good game time to just say, hey, let's take a pause really for just a second and talk about this. So that's in the back of the rule book. Uh, you'll also notice that there are going to be a, a deck of cards, a small deck of cards, and there's also a large deck of cards. Money, um, so you'll, you'll need a banker throughout the game, someone that's going to be giving out the money and taking in, in money that people are paying. And finally, there are three different types of tokens in this game. Uh, one of them looks like it's red, and it just looks like a clock, and these represent the time, uh, the, the limited asset of time in the game. The, the next token is going to be uh, this dark blue one, and it'll have a little a number on it and a little hand. So this represents um, our social media followers. Throughout, throughout the game, we're going to grow our social media following, and uh, we'll use this little token to represent that. So 20K means 20,000 followers. And the last token um, that you can play with, or it's, if you play the more advanced version of the game, these tokens just represent investment opportunities. So you can utilize these um, when you want to invest in someone else's business. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So those are the three tokens. And of course, there's going to be a single die. And we'll utilize this for certain action cards, um, require you to roll the die and to add a little bit of chance to the game. So that's inside the game as well. So that's what you're going to find as you get into the game. Let's go next to how we'll set the game up. Okay, now that we know the purpose of the game, uh, let's talk about how we get there. So the very first thing you do when you're setting up is everyone needs to pick a business track. So a business track, we come. the game comes with five different business tracks. Essentially what it means is you're going to start a series of businesses related to one thing. So let's just take the blue cards for, for example. Uh, the blue cards are called Video Star. And so the very first, it has three different businesses that you can run for vi as a Video Star. The first one me uh, being you can start your very own video channel. So YouTube or something like that, you run videos. Um, the next one that you can, you can grow is a video production company. So now you're making videos for someone else. And finally, you, have, you, turn, you turn your video production into a, a complete online marketing uh, business. And so throughout the game, <clears throat> you're going to try to um, utilize these businesses to make more money. And we're going to talk about how we do that. So everyone to start needs to pick uh, what kind of business they want to run. Okay, this player has decided that they want to be the video star. So they've picked their three uh, blue cards. And you'll notice that at the bottom of each card, there's a little number. So there's a one, a two, and a three. Uh, those are just the different, uh, they're oftentimes referred to as the business type or a business card. Uh, it just means, essentially it means that the, the number one card is cheaper to um, to start and it makes less money. Number two is a little more expensive to start and makes a little more money. And number three is really expensive to start and makes a lot of money. So I usually, when I get them, I lay them out in what I call my portfolio. So the, the space in front of you is your portfolio. Uh, so I'll lay out my number one, my number two, and my number three like that. Now, at the beginning of the game, none of these cards have been activated yet. Okay, so you made the decision. Uh, this player elected to be the video star. So he picks up his three blue cards 
And at the bottom of each of these video star cards and really all of the, the business cards, you'll notice a small number. So this is a number one here, there's a number two here, and a number three. Those numbers are oftentimes referred to in the game as a business type or simply as a business card. And what they indicate are really what number one means is that it's a business that's cheaper to start and it's it doesn't make a ton of money. Number two is a little bit more expensive to start, makes more money. And finally, number three is pretty expensive to start and makes quite a bit of money. And so they're just the, the size and the, and the complexity of the business. Once you've selected your three cards, what I generally do, the space in front of you is what we call the portfolio area. And so I'm just going to lay out my one, two, three business cards. That's what we start with. And I'm going to turn them sideways. That simply means that they're not yet active, which means I can't make money on them and I don't have to pay any expenses. Once that's done, I'm going to gather, I'm going to start with eight time tokens and I'll use those throughout the game to activate cards, to, to buy different actions and assets. And I only have eight that I'm limited in how much time that I have. Just like an individual who's starting a real business has a very limited amount of time, we have a limited amount of time in front of us. Once I have my three cards, my eight time tokens, the other thing I get to start the game, I get five action and asset cards. Once you have that, your three businesses turn sideways so we know they're, they're not active. Uh, you have your eight time tokens and you have your five action or asset cards. You're ready to start the game. Okay, once the board is set, now we need to talk about how do we activate these cards? How do we actually use our businesses and our asset and our action cards? So if everyone will look across the top of the card, uh, every card has some, a number and a, a time thing on the left and a number and time on the right. So here at the top left, there should be a certain amount of time. This one is two, two time and zero dollars. This side indicates how much you have to spend to start or activate this card. So in this case, in order to start my video channel, I have to spend two time tokens and zero dollars. Over on the left, right hand side, we also have a time and dollar token uh, sign. And what this indicates is how much I have to spend to keep this card active for every turn. So to keep this particular card active, I have to keep two time tokens on it and it doesn't require any money. So simply, say, simply being done, to activate this card on my turn, I would take two time tokens, set them on my card, and turn it up so then it's active. And now I get to do whatever's on this card. I get the money or whatever, if it's an action card, I get the, to take that action or, or add that asset. And so then as the turns go, as it comes around to the next turn, I have a choice. Before I get paid for this card, I can choose to keep two time tokens sitting there and pay my expense, which is again on the right hand side of the card, or I could take those two time tokens off to use them for something else and I could deactivate that card. It just means that I don't get paid for that particular business that turn. And so you're going to have to use your time. Remember, you only have eight. They don't get spent. They just get used. And if you decide not to use the time here, it goes back into your pool of time and you can use it elsewhere um, to play the game. Let's look at an, a, a, an asset card. So this is a rental property, something that you can uh, activate throughout the game. Uh, to do this one in particular, it looks like it takes two time and $5,000 in order to activate this card. So you would hold it into your in your hand and as soon as you had $5,000 and two time tokens that you would want to, to use, you would activate it, you'd put it into your portfolio, you would put your two time tokens on the card and you would pay the bank the $5,000. I haven't laid the money out here, but that's the money would go to the bank. At that point, this is an active asset and you would get paid for that asset according to how much money it says you should take every turn. Let's say it goes around and it comes back to my turn again. Let's look closely at this card. It required us to pay two time tokens and $5,000 to activate it, but to keep it going every turn, it only, it only requires one time token and $1,000. So what that means is I had two time tokens on this. If I want to keep it active, I can remove one time token, leave the other time token there so I know that I'm paying my time, 
and then I have to pay the bank $1,000. If I choose not to keep that asset active, I would take this time off and I wouldn't pay the bank $1,000. I would simply turn the card so I know it wasn't active and at the end of my turn when I get paid, I would not take the money for that card. And that leads us to the next topic, which is probably important to talk about right now. The blue cards are what we call action cards. The purple cards are asset cards. When we play a purple card, it, it, it becomes part of our portfolio. So general, gen, generally, we'll set it in, in our portfolio. And it stays in our portfolio. Even if we choose not to keep that an active asset, we can deactivate that asset. It still remains in our portfolio. It never goes back to the middle pile. Action cards, on the other hand, when they're played, they only last for one round. And so this action card, it, once I played it, would go back to the middle of the table. If I had a different action card, such as a customer satisfaction card, which I would have to spend a certain amount of time and looks like no money to activate, um, and I would get these benefits, I, what I would do is during my turn, I would set it down above my portfolio, put the required time, so this requires five time tokens to play it. One, two, three, four, five. That means I have five less time tokens to utilize that round. I would take the benefit of the card at the end of my turn, whatever money or social media followers, or whatever it tells me to do. And then the next turn around, as we come back around at the very beginning of my turn, I would take my time tokens off of that action card. I would return that action card to the middle and then continue the game on my turn as normal. I can play the action and asset cards that I desire. So the time goes to the action card for one turn and then it comes off the next turn. Um, asset cards, on the other hand, just if there's an upkeep, then you have to keep the time on them in order to keep them active, just like you would with a business. Okay, so now I th it's probably time to go through what each round would look like. So what does one round of gameplay look like? So the very first thing you do when it's your turn is you're going to clear out any, any action cards from the last round. So in this case, I have a satisfied customer card sitting in front of me that's using five time tokens. I can't use that this round. I used it last round. So I'm going to collect my time, return it to my portfolio, and then place my satisfied customer card into the middle of the pile where it can, it can go back into the deck. So once I've done that, then I have five cards in my hand and I'm going to draw two more. So I'm going to start with seven cards every single round. So before I start to play my action and asset cards, I need to pay my expenses. So remember, let's just look at our rental property here. Um, at, the, at the top right of every card, there's a certain amount of expenses that have to be paid in order to keep this active. If I want to keep my rental property active this round, I need to pay one time token and $1,000. So in this case, I do want to keep it active. I leave my one time token on top. I take one of my $1,000 bills and I put it into the bank. Now that's active. I have another active asset, which is my video channel, and it requires two time tokens, tokens if you look at top right there. No money. So I'm going to keep that active as well, and I'm going to place it right there. Uh, at this stage, I'm going to look at my cards and I'm going to evaluate what do I want to do? What do I want to activate? Um, in this case, I'm going to play a social media follower card. I'm going to show that to you really quickly. So you can see the activation cost is three time tokens and $10,000. And it's only used one time. There's no, there's no upkeep because it's just an action card, not an asset. So I'm going to place that in front of me above my portfolio. I'm going to put my three time tokens on there. And then I'm going to pay $10,000. So I have a 20, put 20 in and take my 10 back. Okay, that's now activated. And by doing that, I get to add 50,000 social media followers. And so the way I would do that is I would simply take my social media followers. I have 20,000, 40,000, and 50,000. 
I'm going to add them to my portfolio. These social media followers will be used across all of my different assets and businesses. It's not just for one, it actually gets used for everything. So it gets added to my portfolio just like the time did. And it stays there throughout the game unless for some reason someone plays an action card on me that causes me to lose some of those social media followers. All right, so at the end of my turn, I've played all that I want to play. I have six cards in my hand. I started with five, I drew two, and I played one, which means I can only have five at the end of the turn, and so I need to discard one of these cards. So I select the one I want to discard and place it into the middle, and my turn is essentially over. At that point, it's time to count up, um, count up how much money that I made that turn. And so that's done, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Okay, my turn is over. It's time to count up how much money I made. So each card is a little bit different. Um, different cards have different things assigned to them, but let's just talk about the business cards first. So I'm gonna, the, I'm gonna take my active card, as you can see, uh, my video channel, which I had active with my two time tokens. And right here in the middle, it tells me how much income I'm gonna make every turn from this card. So every turn, I'm gonna make $4,000. That's wonderful. But the really nice thing about this card and all of the business cards is that there's a bonus. So this is a special uh, aspect of this game is that you don't just get paid the income you make, but you get more income if you have more social media followers. In this case, I get $3,000 more for every 10,000 social media followers I have. So if you remember on my last turn, I played uh, a card that gave me 50,000 social media followers. Well, what that means is I get to, I get 3,000 for every 10. So with 50,000, that means I get to multiply that three by five. I get $15,000 more every turn because of my social media followers. So then I take my 15,000 plus my 4,000 and this card is going to pay me $19,000 that turn with the combined income and bonus. Let's look at our rental property. In this case, our rental property pays $3,000. So as long as it's active, I'm gonna get 3,000 more. So the 3,000 plus the 19 that I had gives me a total of $22,000 for that round, which I'll take from the bank. One thing to notice on some of the cards like rental properties and stocks are the same way, there is a bonus. So if I have another rental property next to this one, let me just, see if I can find one really quickly so I can do this example. They're on the bottom, so that was really easy. Let's say I have both of these rental property cards played. Okay, so this one's down, they're both active. Uh, this particular card says that it's going to add, uh, let me see if I can, I'm gonna add $2,000 for every additional rental property. So in this case, I have one additional rental property, so I get 3,000 plus 2,000 gives me a total of 5,000 for this card. A different rental car property card might say something different. It might have, in this case, this rental property card pays me $7,000 as my base income, and I get a bonus of $4,000 for every additional. So if I had this one plus, let's say just one of these, this one plus this one, I would get the 7,000 plus the 4,000 would give me 11,000 here. Plus this card is paying me the three plus two, so that's 5,000. So the combined would be 16,000, 11,000 for this card and 5,000 for this card, which would give me the $16,000 total. I would add that to my income from my, my business and that would be my total income for the round. The bank would pay it to me and we'd move on to the next round. There's just two more special situations I wanna talk about really quickly to help you in the gameplay. Uh, let's imagine that this is my turn and at the beginning of my turn, I'm gonna get my time back from this action card, return it to my portfolio, and I'm gonna put that card back into the middle. And then for the sake of this argument, let's imagine there's another card I want to play that requires more time than I have. Uh, I have five time tokens. Let's say there's something that I want to do that requires six time tokens. In that case, I may want to deactivate one of my assets. In this case, I'm gonna do my rental property. So I'm gonna deactivate that, 
put my time back in my portfolio and I'm not gonna pay the $1,000 upkeep cost. So for this round, I'm not gonna get paid for that rental property. I go on and I do whatever I want to do that round. Let's say we come back around, it's the ne my next turn. Um, and in this turn, I want to reactivate my rental property. I don't wanna leave it inactive for so long. I have enough time at this point to do that. Um, it, to reactivate the asset, I essentially have to pay the, the start price again. So if I have deactivated this, I would have to reactivate it by paying two time tokens and $5,000 to do that. All right, so that's one thing. There is a caveat to this. There is a, an action card in here that's called Stressed Out. And when you get this card, you can play it on any player that you want to. Essentially what it says is if that player doesn't have three time tokens in that moment to play, then they are stressed out and they have to deactivate uh, one of their businesses. So the last special case I'd like to talk about is what's called the multiple, the income multiplier. Um, the advertising action card is a great example. If I play zero time and $5,000, I can play this advertising action card and it multiplies my income by three. Now, not my total income. This particular advertising card will multiply the income of any asset so I could play it on this rental property and multiply the income by three, not the bonus, just the income, or this particular card can be played on any type one or type two businesses. Remember, the, the types are at the very bottom of the card, so this card is a type one, this card is a type two. I could multiply the income, so let's imagine that I have this card active, my video production, and it has an income of 25,000. If I multiplied that by three, I would get an income of $75,000 that round on this. It doesn't include the bonus, it just includes the income. So the only other caveat to this is that I can play that on my business, let's say I play that multiple on that business card. If I had another multiple card, let's see if I have one in my hand here. If I had another multiple card, another advertising card for example, this one is a multiple of four, which can be played on any asset or on a type one business. I can't play in a multiple card on the same asset in the same turn, or I can't play two multiple cards on the same asset in the same turn. In other words, if I had chosen or elected to play this advertising card on this business, I couldn't then do this multiple card on that business as well. I can't multiply that asset twice in the same round. Now I could put this on my rental property, but I couldn't put both of them on my rental property. The last topic we wanna to talk about is actually an advanced topic. So this isn't gonna be done every time you play. This is only if you wanna play the advanced option. Um, but what we want to introduce to you is how we can be investors in Startup Millionaire. An investor is simply someone who gives you money uh, to help you start a business or to buy an asset and they expect you to pay them back um, on, on their investment. You're, they're going to expect some of that money to come back to them. And here's how that works in Startup Millionaire. Let's imagine that this is my board right now. I've activated my first business. I have a rental property activated. I have some cash and I have some time. I have five time tokens. I really want to activate my second business. My video production business is, uh, it requires I think five time tokens and it requires $40,000. Well, I have the time. I have five time tokens sitting here that I really am not doing anything with and I want to activate that business with it. But I only have about $25,000, $27,000. And so what I could do if I really wanted to activate this business this round is I can ask for investors. Now remember, this is an advanced option. You don't play this every time. It's only for those who are playing the investor option. But I can ask for investors. What that would look like would be this. I would pay $20,000 and my time tokens onto my business. I would ask anyone if they wanted to be an investor with me. If I found someone who was an investor, they would need to pay $20,000 to me in order to make up 
for what I don't have. Remember, this costs 40000 to start. I only have twenty. If they gave me the $20,000, we'd take both of our money, put it in the bank, activate this card, and then I would take my small investor token, 50%. They paid half. They paid 50%. And I would put it right here on this card to remind me that I have an investor. Here's what that means. As my, t my turn ends and I make a certain amount of income off of this card, I make $25,000 in my basic income and I earn $5,000 for every 10,000 followers that I have. So whatever money I make of income and bonus on this business, I would end up every single turn paying my investor half. I keep that token there to remind me that I have an investor. And when I get my money for this particular business only, I would pay them half because they own half of it, 50%. I would pay them half of the income. Remember, that is income and bonus that comes out of this particular business. Okay, that's it. So you now know how to set up the game. You know how to play the game. Um, as you go through, we didn't go through every single card individually. Uh, most cards on them have a, an explanation of how they get played. Uh, like this rental property, it's going to talk about you know how much money you're going to make and how the bonuses work. Um, the action cards have similar things. Just read through them and you should be fine on all of those. The other thing to notice is down at the very bottom of each card, there's kind of just a little educational hint or educational tip. This one talks about the importance of real estate in a portfolio, in a real life portfolio. So there's some educational opportunities along the way and I hope that you'll take advantage of those. But the main thing is, have fun. This is an amazing game and it, it really tries to replicate the process of starting a business and creating wealth in your life. So treat it that way, learn some lessons, have fun, and enjoy Startup Millionaire. Thanks.